Shalom, family. It is such a beautiful day out there. I mean, I can hear the birds singing and there's sunshine and then there's a cool breeze blowing. So it is just so wonderful to, to uh, be in the day that the Lord has made. So we're on part two uh, about, uh, about renewing the mind. So we're going to go ahead and pray. And then we're going to go into our uh, study for this week. Wonderful Father, we thank you for this beautiful, gorgeous day that you have made. And we do rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you for being uh, Father. Thank you that we can call you Father. Thank you that we are your beloved children. Thank you for Yeshua, your beloved son that you sent. And you, and you spared him not, but you offered him up for us all. And how shall you not with him give us all things? So we invite your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open our ears. Give us hearing ears. Open our eyes so that we can see. Open up our hearts so that we can receive the precious seed of your word and renew our minds, renew our minds, Holy Spirit. We need you. Without you, we don't understand anything. Without you, we cannot understand the spiritual. So please open up our minds and teach us and guide us into truth. And we thank you and we love you and change our lives. Uproot everything that needs to be uprooted and plant again and and uh, tear down what needs to be teared down. Wonderful Holy Spirit and build up again. Make us who we ought to be. Make us into the image of our master, Yeshua, the Messiah, in his holy name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to go ahead and share the screen and get our today's teaching. And I did not start it at the beginning like I should have, but let's go ahead and get it. And now we're going to start the slideshow, okay, from the beginning. All right, so renewing the mind. We're on part two. And I may not do a lot of reviewing some. I'll sprinkle in with the lesson, but uh, I may not do an, an extensive review. I just encourage you to get the overview, look, watch the overview and part one. Okay, so renewing the mind is the sanctification process. In other words, um, uh, renewing the mind, the Holy Spirit uh, is trying to make us holy because our holy God says, uh, he commands us to be holy because I, your Lord God, am holy. So we have to be holy in order to even associate with with him. So that's what renewing your mind is. And it starts after being born again. Okay. So this is a little slight review, but John three, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yeshua by night and said unto him, Robbie, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of of God. So uh, you have to be born again. It's not about going to church and and uh, about uh, being on a different board or whatever. It's about having that changed heart. So that's what we're going to talk about with being born again, because Yeshua uh, said that except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he and uh, and I got it twice, didn't mean to. But anyway, uh, that refers to they didn't have, as I said on the uh, previous video, they did not have a New Testament. 
They only had the Old Testament, which is uh, the the uh, law and the uh, writings, Psalms, Proverbs, etc., and the prophets. So this is what they lived by. And so uh, we are a little bit more fortunate, hopefully, that we we uh, thank uh, our Master Yeshua that uh, we do have uh, uh, some additional teachings, which always in the New Testament always refers back and corroborates the old. But then uh, it says, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. That heart is a heart that's willing to obey. It says that in, I think it's in Ezekiel in another place, but it's a heart that will obey and say yes to Yahweh. Uh, it's not a stone and rebellious heart. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, this is my life and, and so forth and so on. And in verse 27, it says, I will put my spirit, my spirit. This is Abba Yahweh saying, I will put my spirit within you. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it is Yahweh's spirit. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. See, when he puts his spirit within us, then we, we, will, we, will, we won't get it all right once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, but we begin to walk in his statutes and we begin to keep his judgments and he begins to change us from the inside out, from the inside out. Okay, so now what is repentance from that time, Yeshua? I love to call him Yeshua because that is his given name. It's Yeshua or Yahushua or Yahushua or whatever. But when we say Yeshua, we are saying God is our salvation. So I love that name, Yeshua. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he called unto him the 12 that he had chosen and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil, many that were sick and healed them. This is what the disciples did. They told them that you should repent. And they, then they went ahead and cast out the devils and anointed with oil those who were sick and healed them. And we should be doing the same. All right, now what is repentance? Well, we talked about in the last two uh, videos about the Western or Greek mindset as opposed to the Hebraic mindset. Uh, the Western mindset, repentance means to change your mind. I have seen this in little commentaries in some of the Bible versions uh, that, uh, that uh, I've read. And so, but then studying deeper, the Hebrew mindset, teshuva, it is, a, is the meaning of repent, which literally means return, return. And, uh, and, and, and see, all of the transgression and sin are the natural and inevitable consequence of our straying from God and his laws. It is our destiny, therefore our duty to be with God as God is with us. Remember, his name, uh, Yeshua is named Emmanuel, God with us. 
It is within our power to redeem ourselves from sin by resolving, making up. Now that where the mind comes in and it's a heart decision also, but it's within our power to redeem ourselves from sin by resolving to break away from it, turn away from it and turn back to Yahweh, whose loving kindness is ever extend, extended to the returning sinner. That is what repentance means. So teshuvah literally means to return. And look at the scriptures in the Old Testament. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Therefore, and I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord. And remember that they are our ancestors that Yahweh God is talking to. And he's saying, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin. And uh, just a quick note on iniquity. Um, iniquity is just a constant practice of sin. Uh, it is, we have convinced ourselves that it's not a sin and it's not wrong. So then we are walking in iniquity and that is, that, that is we are really, we get real in real big trouble with Yahweh God when we are in our iniquity. All right, so cast away from all you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, turn yourselves and live. But as we know, they didn't turn, and but we must not be like them. We must turn. They didn't turn, and so this is what happened that Deuteronomy 28 chapter verses 15 through 68 happened. And so we are living as a result of, of their sins uh, even today, even today. So, um, so we must not be stiff-necked and, uh, and hard-headed uh, about our relationship to Yahweh God. All right, now, what is the kingdom of heaven? All right, uh, and Matthew 4 and 17 says, from that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, what happened there? What is the, and I want to quickly uh, explain, there is no difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Uh, some, uh, some of the um, books the, uh, that were written, the four gospels, they some say heaven, some say God, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. There's no differentiation with those two terms. Okay, now, Yeshua announced that Yah's reign, the Most High Yah, which is Yahweh, definitely had definitely come to the earth through his ministry. And in, uh, in Luke 10 and 9, Yeshua is given instructions to the ones he sent out. And he says, and heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Yah is come nigh or near unto you. So he was announcing that, okay, uh, the devil has had this thing for thousands of years now. Now I'm taking over. This is Yeshua. He's taking over. Okay, now what is the kingdom of heaven again? The English word near can be misleading. It sounds as if Yeshua is telling his people and telling us that the kingdom is close, but not quite. But that is not what he is saying. That's why it's important to know and to study our Hebrew roots. 
Yeshua was using the verb, Hebrew verb, karav, which means intimately close. So Yeshua was telling the people the kingdom of heaven is, or the kingdom of God is intimately close. Okay, so let's dig a little deeper. The prophet Isaiah karav, or came near unto his wife, and she conceived a son. And it says in Isaiah 8 and 3, and I went unto, or I corralled the prophetess, which was his wife, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, call his name. Now, this is a doozy here. Call his name, Maher Shalom Hashbah. And so when he came near, he caught that was an intimate relationship that he had with his wife. So karab means to come near in intimacy. And Isaiah was intimate with his wife. And as a result, she bore a son. So Yeshua is saying, okay, you need to be intimate with the kingdom. The kingdom is right here. And so you need to accept it, to receive it, just like Isaiah's wife, the prophetess, received the seed of Isaiah. So it is, it is a term of intimacy. But what exactly does it mean to say that Yah's kingdom had arrived through his son, Yeshua? It meant that through Yeshua, God is establishing his sovereignty. He is intervening in the earth and taking charge. He is defeating the power of the enemy and overthrowing that devil's kingdom. And so it was just at this particular time that God sent forth his son, born of a woman, uh, uh, to destroy the works, to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. And in John, it says he came to destroy the works. John 3, destroy the works of the devil. So he's saying now the devil's reign is over. The devil's reign is over for those who will be intimate and receive the kingdom. All right, now. He is, the, he is saying, I'm defeating the power of the enemy and overthrowing his kingdom. And this is true in Colossians where the apostle Paul writes. He says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? See, if we are not in the kingdom of God, then we are under the control of the power of darkness. And it says, he had delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. That is good news. That is good news. That's no wonder they call it the gospel. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? That is our master, our teacher, our savior, Yeshua. He's the uh, uh, Abba Yahweh has delivered us. When we receive the kingdom, then the, the act of deliverance takes place where we are delivered from, from the control of the kingdom of darkness. And, and, and in Matthew 28 and 18, it, uh, Yeshua, Yeshua uh, all uh, uh, announces, he pronounces, he proclaims. I seem to want to have the hiccup, so excuse me. And Yeshua came and spake unto them saying, all power, not some power, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So that is, he's announcing even in a deeper way that, okay, the kingdom has come to the earth. The kingdom has come to the earth with my death, my burial, and my resurrection. Now let's look further. And this is, Colossians 2, and it starts at the 12th verse. This is one of my favorite parts of Colossians. 
Uh, it says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. And you, that's all of us, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together. That means he made alive because we were dead in our sin, but he made us alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. That is some exciting good news. We are forgiven for all of our trespasses. Hallelujah. Continuing verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. But what is that saying? Everything that the law said was against us, the ordinances and the commands, uh, he nailed, it was nailed to the cross, nailed went to Yeshua's cross. And verse 15 is a real good one. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Okay, now let's take that in the Passion Translation, those verses 12 through 15 in Colossians 2. It says, for we have been buried with him into his death. Our baptism into death also means we were raised with him when we believed in Yahweh's resurrection power, the power that raised him from death's realm. The realm of death describes our former state before we believe. For we were held in sin's grasp, but now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never, whoo, hallelujah, Never to return, for we are forever alive and forgiven of all of our sins. See, the devil can't do anything about, about that we have been resurrected, resurrected and we are out of the realm, out of his control. We're forever alive, eternal life, ever alive and forgiven for our sins. That's good. And in verse 14, he says, and he canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. And the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. In other words, Satan stands as a, an accuser before Yahweh God, our Abba. He stands as an, an accuser, and then he's trying to uh, enforce an arrest warrant that God shouldn't have anything to do with us. But Yeshua canceled that, canceled every legal violation. And, and continuing, he erased it all. Hallelujah. Our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it all. And they cannot be retrieved. Once we have been forgiven, it's gone. It's just like that Old Testament scripture. He has cast our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. And he also says, as far as the east is from the west, I have removed Israel's sins from them. Hallelujah. That is good. That is so good. That's shouting time right there. And everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto Yeshua's cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. And then Yeshua made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon. Now this is happening in the spiritual realm. Stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. That's what the name Satan means, a Satan, it means the accuser. And by the power of the cross, Yeshua led them around as prisoners in a procession 
of triumph, he was not their prisoner. They were his. So what is this referring to? It's referring to in biblical times when the one king will conquer another, one nation will conquer another, then they will spoil that nation and they bring back all the captives and then they parade them through the streets. And the uh, and the uh, and the uh, victorious uh, nation, the people will just be be praising, be praising Yahweh because of the victory. So this is what happened with that old devil. He was paraded through the streets, and he was. It was in a procession. They were the prisoners in a procession of triumph. I tell you, we 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 uh we are victorious. We are victors through our Yeshua, through our Savior and our Lord and God Yeshua. All right. Now, when Yeshua walked through the land healing and delivering people, Yahweh's kingdom was visible. It was it broke into time. It came from eternity, broke into time just as it had in Exodus when he sent all of those plagues, all of those signs and wonders, and he split the sea, and he gave our ancestors victory over the Egyptians. So, so he's breaking, he broke through also because because uh, moses has said that uh yahweh is going to send another prophet a prophet just like me and so he sent one greater than moses and so yahweh's reign was revealing itself in a greater way than what the people uh in uh, egypt and the uh during the exodus had experienced he was he his reign was really revealing itself so he's saying, devil, you're finished. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now, these are there's some warnings about the kingdom. The kingdom will not be received by everyone, unfortunately. And I pray, I pray every day, I don't miss a day, that all of my family, all of my loved ones receive the kingdom that they will allow themselves to be drawn out of the control and the power of darkness and transfer into the kingdom of Yahweh's beloved son. So everyone will, will not receive, uh, the kingdom will not be received by everyone. But our master Yeshua issues an invitation, not a command. He never forces us to do anything. He will, he will sometimes now, he will sometimes uh, uh, draw back his hand and things will get so rough that we will gladly run to him in repentance and receive the kingdom. So, 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 uh, but he never commands us. I was talking to somebody about two or three years ago, and I said to that person, don't you wish uh, Yahweh God would just hit us over the head and make us do what he wants us to do? And that person said, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't do that. He does not do that. Okay, now he is a loving and merciful king, but he will never force anyone to join. Mm -mm. He will wait patiently and he will, he will let us do whatever we feel big enough to do. And then when things get really, really tough, then we'll be glad to come to him humbly and repent and return to him and follow him. He says in Luke 18 and 17, he says, Verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Yahweh as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. Little children are just, their little hearts are so open, and uh, they accept, they will receive what you tell them, they'll believe what you tell them. And so, uh, and then if they do get in a little scrapple or fight or whatever, they're back playing in the next two minutes. So uh, th this is what Yeshua is saying, except you'll be a little child and just receive the kingdom. Innocent, humbly. 
then you will in no wise enter. Okay, now, uh, uh, then in Matthew 7 and 21, it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. When Yeshua spoke about receiving the kingdom of God or entering the kingdom of heaven, he was not talking about how to get into heaven after we die. Now that needs to be washed out of our thinking, out of our mindsets that, uh, that uh, he was talking about. He's talking about how to get into heaven after we die because we have been singing songs and, and actually our, our forefathers and, and some of us, our grandparents have had it so hard. You know, we thought that that was the only way that we would enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he was actually speaking about having life here and having it more abundantly the greatest life possible. So by living under his reign through the power of his grace, we will have the greatest life possible. And he was using a Hebraic idiom, idiom, idiomatic expression to communicate this message. Okay, now let's continue. To what is the kingdom of God? Uh, we're going to compare the Western mindset to the Hebrew mindset, who break my he break mindset. Now I have heard televangelists tell those that come on TV say that uh, the kingdom of God is God's way of being and doing right, but the Hebraic mindset it does not say that. The Hebraic mindset says that God has established His sovereignty. He intervened into the natural realm and took charge. He defeated the power of the enemy and overthrew his kingdom. That is the Hebrew mindset. That is the renewed mindset. Okay, let's look at it. God's way of being and doing right. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and Shalom or peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Now, Western mindset, I belong to blank church. I'm a bishop. I'm a pastor. I'm a deacon. I'm a church mother. I sing in the choir. I, I, uh, I'm on the praise team. I'm on the trustee board. I'm on the, uh, I'm on the board of directors. All of this mindset that means absolutely nothing to Yahweh God. The Hebrew mind says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators or the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, worshiping idols, nor adulterers having, you know what adultery is, all right? Nor effeminate, nor pedo, that, that are the pedophiles, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that's what, and, and you know what that is? Nor thieves, somebody involved in fraud or stealing from somebody. Nor covetous, greedy people, just think about money all the time. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It's not belonging to a church. It's not serving on such and such a book. That's what Paul was talking about by renewing the mind, knowing what is involved in being a kingdom citizen. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. And then in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, it continues on, but I like how the Passion Translation says this. It's true that some of you once lived in those lifestyles, but now you have been purified from sin, made holy, and given a perfect standing 
before God. And because of the power of the name of the master, Yeshua, the Messiah, and through our union with the spirit of God. See, it's the Holy Spirit who, uh, who empowers us, who strengthens us to walk holy before a holy God. He is the one, and we have, and, and so many have neglected even you humbling themselves and crying out to Yahweh God, crying out to Yeshua to fill them with his Holy Spirit. And, uh, and look, here I'm, I'm just about done, but the Shema lifestyle involves having an ear to hear. Remember, we talked about that in the overview and then in last in uh, the part one. It means to listen, to pay full attention as if your life depended on it, which it really does. Eternal life is dependent on it. Once you paid attention and heard what is said, begin immediately to incorporate what has been said into your life and adapt every aspect of your thought life, your speech, and, con and conduct to what you have heard and begin to memorize and teach it to your children and demonstrate it to the world until you and the world around you is transformed into the image of the words that you have heard and begin to memorize and teach it to your children and demonstrate it to the world. Until you and everybody who sees you, the world around you is transformed into the image of the words you hear. It means doing whatever Yahweh says, Yeshua says, and not doing whatever he instructs not to do. And, and not doing whatever he instructs against, rather. And doing this not as with a sluggish heart, but out of a mixture of awe and passionate love of him and obedience to him in full faith and trust that what Yahweh says is good. Yahweh says it's good. And Jesus often concluded his teachings with the words, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. What he really meant, as I went over in last, last uh, in part one, you've heard my teachings, now take it to heart and obey it and make it a part of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so our scriptures, I meant to just kind of delete them because we had such a long presentation. But it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, that is it for part one. And uh, next time we will do part three and we will get deeper into renewing your mind. And I just pray that your mind is being renewed because, uh, you know, we, we've been, we have been taught and there's been some things that maybe weren't necessarily from the word of God. And I just want to say this, the Bible is really written to the Hebrew Israelites especially the Old Testament. And when you read, when you see what God is saying to our forefathers, our ancestors, it makes it so much more easier to understand. And so all of my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, I, I, I just encourage you to get into the word to get into God's word, Yahweh's word, and take it to heart and be doers of the word and not just hearers only, okay? So let's just, I um, just want to say a prayer and a blessing over you. Abba Yahweh, we thank you so much for your word. 
We thank you for teaching us. We thank you for having hungry hearts and thirsty souls to hear and receive what you want us to know because you are trying to uh, form us into a people, into your chosen ones. And so, Father, we just ask that you would uh, renew our minds. Wash our minds from old erroneous teaching and teach us and guide us into truth. In Yeshua's name, amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. So go in the shalom of God. And I apologize for the beeping. My husband was cooking and he forgot to turn off the timer. But anyway, love you all and be blessed in Yeshua's name. Be blessed. In